you have to be careful as an actor not to overthink things. And I think if you get into class um, too much, then you start thinking about stuff, and you're in your head about it, and then that blocks all the all the uh, inspiration from coming out because you think about it, you second guess yourself all the time, especially if you have some acting coach telling you you're doing it wrong, or you know telling you that oh I think you know this is a more uh, subtle choice or whatever they say. Um, I'm just not a big fan of acting coaches, and uh, and I just love acting, you know, and it's. I'm so lucky to be able to have an opportunity to do it and make a living at it. I mean, that's a, that's a blessing uh, in this crazy business. And uh, I just didn't like working with new people. That's the other thing about being a film and television actor is that you're working with new people all the time. You know, I do probably 10 different things a year, film and television wise. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with 10 different directors, 10 different producers, probably 50, 60 different actors. So it's really fun. You know, and even when I was doing Prison Break, you know, I was working with the same regular, series regular characters, uh, you know, actors all the time. But also, too, they bring in, you know, uh, guest stars or recurring characters. And so you, you get to, and you get to know everybody. It's, a, it's like a family. It's like, that's one of the reasons why I think I got into theater uh, and to acting is because um, it's like a family. Uh, you get into a play and you're all there together working for the same goal. You know, learning your lines, working hard on the piece, and you all come together as a family and you give a performance together. Same thing with film and television. You're all kind of working together. The cast, the crew, the producers, the director, everybody. Well, there's interesting. I've done, uh, I did like 18 months worth of Kiss of the Spider Woman. That's eight shows a week for 18 months. And that's doing the exact same show, eight shows a week for eight. 16, well, 18 months, two, a year a year and a half. And uh, it's hard to keep it fresh when you, when you have to do a show over and over again like that. The same thing every day. Whereas film and television, you're getting a TV show, you're not doing the same show. You're doing a different episode. You're working with the same people. You're playing the same character. But you always find things to inspire you, to make you laugh. I, I always say, get, you know, do everything you can to get a laugh if you can. Even if you're in a serious piece, you know, get that laugh if you can, if you can, if you can manage it. Because uh, even in a serious piece, uh, you, you, people uh, need a little jocularity, a little lightheartedness, so that they can feel the drama at the end, you know. So, uh, but anyway, it's a it, keeping it fresh has never been a problem for me. I just have fun. The more I play, the better I am. Um, I, I think. Uh, you know, I always say, uh, they call it a play, for Christ's sake. They don't call it a, um, a, a like a, a painful, a, a, a hard work. It's, a, it's you know, they, it's called a play. We're supposed to play. People want to see us playing. We're players, you know. We're not, you know, angst-ridden, you know. Uh, we, we, want, we, we want people to have a, a, a life-changing experience, catharsis, you know. And the way you do that is by portraying vivid, live characters, and you do that only through play and improvisation within the text. Sure. Um, well, um, headshots are very important, especially for this just starting out actor. And the, what, the most important thing about a headshot is that it looks like you, especially for women. If, you, if it takes you three and a half hours to put on the makeup before they took your headshot, then you're taking the wrong picture. You want to be able to put the makeup on yourself. You want to be able to look like that picture in less than 10 minutes. You want to be able to be the person in the picture walking through the door when you audition because if you're not, you won't get the job. If you're not, if you, if you got a picture that doesn't look like you and you walk through the door and they look at you and go, wait a minute, no job. But if you got a job, if you got a picture that looks like you, that you walk through the door, then they're going to look at you and say, "All right, let's see what you got." But you, you, you if, if you, it's you know, it's such a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a sensitive thing, you know. We all have an image of ourselves, what we look like uh, in our brains, right? 
which isn't necessarily what's actually <laughs> our image. And sometimes it's hard to look at a picture of yourself and say, does this look like me? But trust the photographer, trust your agents, trust other people to help you pick your headshot. Well, I think that uh, it's important as an actor, because I, I would say this, the best thing about being an actor is you have a lot of time off. And the worst thing about being an actor is you got a lot of time off. So the thing to do is you got to figure something to do with your free time while you're not acting. Otherwise, you go crazy waiting for the next gig, which is what I'm doing right now, I'm waiting for the next gig. And it's only been a week and a half. So, I mean, I'm telling you what, it's a, it's a, it's a, a mental struggle. But if you have other things you can do, like I do a lot of voiceovers. Uh, I have a commercial voiceover agent, and they send me out on voiceover auditions all the time. And I have a couple of voiceover accounts that I do. And I also um, uh, write. Uh, I've written a couple of short films, and uh, I've got some, oh, pretty close to done um, screenplay ideas. Um, but that's a whole different thing. But it gives you something to do, and you never know about these things. Also, I'd like to direct. I've been when I was in prison break, I followed around a bunch of the directors. I you know followed them and watched them, and they gave me some hints on what they do and how it all works. So maybe I'd like to get into that one day as well. Um, uh, I might shoot one of my uh, short films uh, just to get a camera like you got and just go out and shoot it with a couple of friends and uh, put it together. Um, because you can do, I mean, now i got you know, Final Cut Pro in my computer at home. I can do a whole movie on that. So, uh, so you know, that's the great thing about today is that, you know, you can you can make your own movie now. Sure, it's a whole different world. It's world fantastic, it's yeah. And uh, so I encourage people to do that kind of stuff. Right. No, I, I don't watch my work very often at all. Very rarely. Uh, I'm on, on to the next thing. Plus, a lot of times, I don't have really any control over how it comes out. You know, I don't have control over what take they pick. I don't have control over what background I'm in. You know, I don't have control over, um, you know, how the a scene is directed. You know, so I don't even think about stuff like that. I just go in there and do it. And uh, when it's done, it's done for me. I don't usually watch it. I mean, if, if I have a question about how something looks or if... Uh, and some actors do this. Some actors watch all the dailies and all the rushes and everything, but I've never done that. I figure they'll tell me if, I'm, if I need to change something. Uh, that's the thing about getting in your head. If you think about it too much, if you start getting paranoid about it, then it just, it just works against you, at least in my opinion.